Good afternoon, good night, or a good evening, or good morning, actually. I don't know. I think there is a little bit of each one, each one of the, the greetings. <laughs> um, and thank you, Sonia, for um, presenting me. So let me start already. Okay, so this is the bio that you guys ha have all had a, on the invitation. So I just wanted to, to um, put in here that I, my background is in physics and I did my PhD and my master's in atmospheric electricity. And uh, for over 10 years, I'm working as uh, registering some high-speed cameras for, uh, with lightning, uh, lightning with high-speed cameras in, I started in Brazil, but I was able to do some work in the United States, uh, uh, Austria and now here in South Africa. Um, so when I talk about light, that I say that I study lightning and using high-speed cameras, all, all, all questions come to uh, um, the chat. Some of them it's very different and some of them is uh, very like interesting to know what is um, possible to, to happen, um, how, how, is, how is everything happen or how the camera works, how the, how, do I, do I know when the lightning will happen or this kind of thing? So I what well, the best way to start the conversation with this is start some showing some videos. So I'm quite geek. And so I show some videos on the, on the cell phone and then I, where I can see, show the, the different, different, uh, uh, different and beautiful, pretty from the lightning things where I can call, and explain some of the questions that they ask, um, all the different uh, type of questions. So here I have some, some of the pictures. Um, so how do I collect this data? So in Brazil, previously there as a student, is I started in this tower here, 27 meters. You could see the, the city, all the sides had a, uh, uh, windows. We could move the cameras inside. And there, Dr. Um, Marcelo Saba also taught her how to, to use the, some, the, the cameras, how to use some other equipment to, to do it. Uh, during the, when the, the thunderstorm was building up, we need to run, rush, and go up this tower um, to collect the data. In the United States, we had a, a little bit more um, flexible and mobile. That was with the Tom Warner. The cameras were in cars. Uh, this one is a van that we would park and be able to open this window and register some, some flashes. Or um, here is this one, the van, uh, the truck. And we have some equipment in the back and then the cameras on the side. There was just two seats, the seat was who, who is driving, the one in the back. In Austria, not as fancy as the United States, we could use the car when, where we put the park and then put the camera. Uh, we put a generator outside and some uh, electric field sensors also outside. And then we'll be waiting for the thunderstorm inside the car. And after we were safe, we would be able to, to collect everything and go back to the office. Here in Johannesburg, I was like, a, okay, I know how hard it is to wait for the thunderstorm in a car. I already knew it how um, it is hard to rush to somewhere and sometimes you're driving like a maniac to get in a place. Um, so here in Johannesburg, I decided to find a place with a view. And I know it sounds very different when you do your research, you love, <laughs> you love what you do, that you search a, a place to live that you have the view. So, <laughs> I got, um, I got one of these apartments here on the top where I could see everything. Yes, it's a beautiful view, one of the best in the city. No, the university doesn't pay for my rent, <laughs> but we, I was able to, to put the cameras. So this is uh, some of the view that I have. Here we have the two towers and here you can see that the, the city is quite a, um, there's not so much buildings in this area here and just on a 
in central area. So I enjoyed the view. So I could see some rainbows from the beginning to the end. So double rainbow and some sunrises that is amazing every day. Okay, so also we put some cameras now on university. This is the building here on university. This window here is mine. Uh, I can uh, put it a cameras this side. This side is the Hill Brown Tower. So this is what it can see, the Hill Brown. Uh, and in the other side, we put the other cameras that is from Marcelo Salva, this one. We have the Syntec Tower. It's where we can see a lot of the flashes as well. So how the camera works. So all those videos that we make is two second videos, up to two seconds, sometimes it's a little bit less. How the camera actually, am I so fast that I can trigger this? No, the camera has an internal memory of one second. So for each frame, new frame that it comes in, in this internal memory, the oldest uh, frame goes and um, comes out of the, 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 the internal memory. So when we trigger the camera, when we trigger the camera, save the, the, the one second prior to the trigger and then the frames after the trigger. So there's two ways to trigger. You can trigger manually, how we did for quite a long time in Brazil, United States, Austria. And, and then you have some challenges. If you're too excited, you miss the end of the flash. If you're too slow, you can miss the beginning of the flash. But the new, new cameras, you have the automatic trigger based on image changes, I'll tell you. Also has their own challenges. It is good, but you can also watch a lot of a black screen with was just the brightness from some, some event that was closed, but not in front of the camera. Okay, so this is how you create a 15 gigabyte size file. Yeah, one, set, uh, one video with two seconds is 15 gigabytes. It's a lot of challenge to keep all this data. It's a lot of hard disks, a lot of uh, time watching. And it's, and, but it, the videos is amazing. I love it. So I, I don't mind. <laughs> so another question is, what do we do with this data? So as background in physics of lightning, we, uh, I, I do, I try to find the uh, parameters and identify, classify things that we can use in different areas, um, such as a meteorology or also uh, on the engineering side. So when we say in the meteorology, what the video can help us. So we watch the, the videos and see the later behavior, the leader behavior, the propagation, um, duration of events. Um, so what type of flashes versus the when the on during the thunderstorm happened, or the type of flash and the severity of the thunderstorm. So, and then we can use this some of the images to see modeling uh, charge distribution, how this uh, behavior of the, the lightning in in correlation with all different uh, uh, equipment meteorology. Or when we go to engineer some parameters that can help the lightning protection systems or the risk analysis and um, also the damage that happened in some equipment, for example. And we attribute this as on the type of flash or one of the uh, characteristics of the flash. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit of flashes now. So how we classify this, this event? I, I'm practical, so I like to classify in two different ways. It is had a contact with the ground, it is a ground flash. If it didn't have any contact with the ground, we call it a cloud. Some authors like to say that it's a cloud to cloud or, or in cloud uh, flash or cloud air. Um, they have all the different uh, names. They, the majority of these ones that doesn't have any contact to the ground, but um, uh, they're also they are the, most, the majority of the flashes. From the, the ground flashes, so the full information, you need to look for two aspects, the direction of the propagation. So if the flash is start on a cloud and then downwards to the, to the ground, or if you start from the, 
the ground and went towards to, to the top and to the cloud. So, and then after this, we see the polarity. So if they was transferred to the ground, a negative charges or positive, or uh, it was a bipolar flash. So for in the case of the downwards, the negative uh, flashes are the most common, 90%, positive 8% and 2% of bipolar. So here on, on the left, you can see a, a beautiful downward. And here on the, on the right, we have a, a upward flash. Okay. Okay, so when we watch this, how we put this in, in how we, they are so all different, how we put them um, classify. So first we, we identify the, pro, the different pro, uh, steps. So for example, this for negative and downward flashes, here we have uh, a, a drawing. Um, so you can see the downward flash come, uh, come toward the ground and it shows a, a stepped leader propagating to the ground. And when it gets close to the, to, the, 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 to the ground, you can see some upward connect leaders coming from the, the highest points on the, on the ground. When these two connect, we have the return stroke, okay? So it's the maximum transfer of charge very quick. All the charges from the, the channel um, go in the, on, on, the, on the path. And then we created this, uh, we have a, like a charge transfer. If this charge keep transferring, it is, we call it continuing current, okay? This continuing, can, this charge can keep transferring ch charge to the ground and have some variations, what we call in the components and can finish then and you have like a um, no charge and transfer. Or you can have a, a leader that uses the same path uh, towards the, the the ground, and we have what we call subsequent return strokes. Negative flashes are common to, to do this more often uh, more and more frequent. So you have a, um, return, uh, many return strokes in the same flash. Uh, so here we have a, uh, the project in Sao Paulo that was from Dr. Marcel Saba. And so you, here in this side, it's 80,000 images per second. When the, the leaders come towards the ground and close enough, you can see the, the buildings responding with all the different uh, upward connected leaders. Here on the right, it is uh, from Tom, that is from Rapid City. And you can see the, the connecting with it as well. Negative flashes, like I said, they, they, they have a more uh, strokes per, per flash. So here in Johannesburg, we got the maximum of 26. Um, the, uh, so 20, 20, only 20% of them is just one flash, uh, one stroke uh, per flash, but the rest is, the average is almost four strokes per flash. Okay, sometimes they happen that to use two different uh, ground um, points on the ground to connect, even though they, they start and use the same leader to come down and they attach to two different places uh, in, in one of each stroke. So how the positive ones is different from the negative ones. So the positive flashes, this one also is a, a brilliant video from Tom that is amazing and shows how the propagation is more continuously uh, um, than the, the step it from the negative. So the positive flashes, we can see that is a positive when start the continuously, or we can see, for example, when we have all these discharges around, what we call recoil leaders. So that the leaders keep, propagating, but they have this required leaders all around, this activity around. Positive flashes usually connect and stays connect for longer. So the continuing current is longer. They are more intense, so they are stronger. And even though they are uh, less frequent, they, they cause a lot of damage. So here it's a stack of images from the required leaders just prior to return stroke. So all this happened 
on this video. Okay, so this is a basic different from them. This type of propagation for negative flashes continues in the pre presence of a um, recoil leader. Uh, positive flashes is much less uh, strokes than a per flash uh, in average, and uh, negatives is almost four. So it's the, the way why we, if you're looking at a thunderstorm and you see flickering, is more, uh, it's a negative flash. So the stronger, like I said, 220 kiloamps, uh, the maximum that we got from positives. The duration of continuing current is hundreds of milliseconds and the negatives in average is tens of milliseconds. And if it happens a second stroke, a positive, it takes longer to have a second stroke. Okay, so we got this information uh, and now we can correlate with the different uh, equipment. For example, this one here is the electric field, fast electric field sensors. It's an indirect measurement. This uh, electric field is uh, here on, a, on the roof of the university. Um, and this flash happened at six kilometers away. But we can see that is associated with the time and all the different variations um, of the flash. Another way to, to, to measure indirectly, it is uh, what the lightning location uh, system does. They, they have a, a magnetic field and electric field sensors. In, in, for example, in South Africa, we have 27 sensors. It's taken care from the South African uh, weather service. Um, they can register and, and triangulate. So we have a, a location and we have an estimated peak current from the, 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 the flash. And they have here, um, we just say that it's pretty good. 93% of detection efficient for the downward flashes. Not as good for well, and, and upward, but um, for negative, uh, for downward is very good. So the other way to measure lightning, it's the direct measurement, but it's very hard because we never know when the lightning will happen. But for example, here, now we have a current measurement on the Sentec tower. This one was the first flash that we had. Um, here is a downward that um, struck the, the tower and it was uh, um, 50 kilo amps uh, of flash. So also we know that upward flashes always happen from the, the tall structures. So we expect it to have more flashes on the towers. So th this is the reason we put a current there. Um, in, for example, in this case here, we can correlate with the, the electric field and we have the two gains of the current measurement um, associated with the, this flash that is in here. Uh, so it's, uh, it's low gain and high gain. And then we can see each one of the pulses is one of associated with one pulse. It's, it's so wonderful. Okay, so talking about upward flashes, um, here, it's what I really like to say talk about it too. It was my PhD subject and I love that. So here in South Africa, uh, no, upward flash happens you know, everywhere, but here in South Africa, I was able to register the two different types. Uh, in here on the left, you can see the negative upward leader, uh, the way you can see the propagation like a, a negative uh, downward, but going upward. And uh, in here, we have a positive upward leader that is more continuously in the presence of a recoil leaders on our sides. So we can see also going in another direction. Uh, so also we have different names for the process. They are similar, but different names. So from, from the tower, you can start seeing what we call initial continuing current. It's very similar to continuing current because it's a, a continuous. Uh, um, and then you can see starting from the, the, the tower and the channel goes into the cloud base. This current can variate, we call the ICC pulses. And if this channel finish, 
we have return strokes that is very similar to the subsequent return strokes because um, the channel is already open for them to use. And then we can have a continuing current and then components in these cases too. So but how does the upward flash start? So there's two types of upward flashes. Uh, can be self-initiated and trig-initiated. The trig-initiator will need some activity, some ground flash or in cloud flash uh, uh, nearby to be able to trigger. And self-initiated, just a tower would be uh, enough. Uh, here in Brazil, here in South Africa, in Brazil, in, in, in United, United States, we didn't see any self-initiated. Um, so we were questioning what happens, why it triggers, and what some flashes are not triggered. And so what we were looking at was an electric field. So the variation of the electric field. So for the self-initiated, the, the field on the area needs to be so high that any slow variation, um, some changes inside cloud can be uh, already um, enough to, to over, uh, pass this, this level, the, what I would call critical electric field. Uh, now thinking on the triggered initiated, even if you have a low uh, electric field, you would need a sudden change on electric field that we attribute to the leaders of the, the triggering um, flashes, okay? So during my PhD and a lot of uh, analysis and everything, so we were looking for uh, explanations, how, how these leaders would make a, uh, such a variation. So this is one nice video here. Um, something happened way far away and then go propagate inside the cloud. You can see here the leader on the cloud base. This we were able just to see with the LMA United States with the 3D inside the cloud. And then we, here is the, it was the first video that we see more clearly that the leaders inside the cloud start propagating. Here is the tower. So when it gets close to the tower, close enough and you can see the answer from the tower with the upward flash, you see? And then we have the upward flash. So we, we name it, this is a T leader that is the triggering leader that goes uh, uh, inside the cloud and then the, uh, the upward flash that goes on the cloud base here. Yeah, um, so what would be associated with T leaders, the triggering leaders? It is the, the three situations to be uh, just the, the fact that it has a, a, a in cloud flash here would be enough to trigger output flash. Um, or we this 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 flash inside the cloud could develop as an in cloud or even a, um, develop it as a, a, a return stroke and have a cloud to ground. The other option would be that you have a downward flash. And during the continuing current, the continuing current, the, the leaders start um, keep going inside the cloud, inside the land charge centers, uh, feeding the channels. So you can see, and then when this leader goes on top of the tower, and you have the, the response from the tower. Or you can see the uh, by the return stroke that the leader was on top of the tower, but even the leader was not enough, but as soon as you have a return stroke, uh, all the, re the, the charges inside the, 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 the channel will rearrange and then it will be like a, enough so the change for the upward flash. So here also, we have a positive flash coming down here uh, and then we have an answer from the tower. Um, our recoil leaders here propagated. So sure that it was a positive one. And then we have the answer from the tower here. 
Petite scène tac tac. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of the, the project and what we're going to do. So nothing of this would be even possible if we didn't have Tom Warner's camera and all his board um, and Marcelo Saba from MP that also um, provides some cameras and some electric grid sensors and this year some current sensors. Uh, we have also Marcelo Cerda that provides some field meals for us. And we have also a collaboration with Vanda Becerra with a, a current sensor. So this is the research that I'm working now. Some, like I said, from Brazil, from from United States, and some from here on the uh, in university. So what is the goals and what are we going to do? So we are looking at the continue uh, connecting leaders, and this one, this one, that we saw this building here that is being hit, uh, uh, being struck a couple of times, um, more often for us. It is still inside the university, so we're going to put these two shots uh, here on the top. And then we are going to see the final jump. The, the, the final jump is the connection between the, the downward leader and the upward connect leader. And we'll try to do some drone experiments with the, to see uh, different heights on the, on, the, on the thing, on the tower, and uh, um, some other measurements. Um, on the upward lightning uh, part, we want to see um, the current and the visual because it's not easy to have a current and be able to see some of the towers in the world. They are inside the cloud, so they cannot see. So we, now we can, here we can see. And oh, thank God we have a, <laughs> uh, some current measurement and uh, probably, hopefully, Next year, next, the other tower also will be um, instrumented. It's all in the process, but you know, science. Um, and then we're going to check multiple towers uh, involvement and current measurements and uh, a little bit more about the initiation if we can um, see, find some uh, extra information and some co correlations with electric field and theoretical models. With this data and the, uh, with the lightning, with, with the cameras, we can see some where the, the lightning happens and with the current, we can see what happened. So we can see uh, all this and see on the scenario of the lightning detection network and see some validation, some um, what we can do and help them to do better on this point. Um, and also here, one of the things that we do a lot in, uh, in South Africa, it is uh, talk to schools to promote the, the lightning awareness, to make sure that uh, um, we, are, we are trying to make the, uh, how do I say this? Um, be inside the person to be uh, safe <laughs> and not just, um, just how to protect themselves better and that's it. So this year we have the like, uh, ICLP, that also the Lightning Johannesburg Lightning Laboratory is part of the team, and we are doing some of the, the on the conference. Um, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>